Phones have gotten pretty huge, and while they're fantastic tools, they often come at a cost. From social media addictions to the sheer inconvenience of carrying a large device when running, or even wearing clothes without pockets, there are plenty of situations when it would be nice to not have a phone. But phones play a key role in our society, from getting an Uber to coordinating friends, and even accessing a menu at a restaurant. So what option do we have? Having a second, smaller phone for these situations doesn't really make sense. But maybe a smartwatch does. What if a smartwatch could replace a phone when going out to bars, when going on a run, or when trying to detox from social media? Can a smartwatch actually take the place of a phone? To answer this question, I replaced my phone with the LTE Apple Watch 6 for the past week. And honestly, it was very surprising. There were plenty of things I was able to do far better than I expected. And of course, there were some limitations that I really didn't see coming. Now, I don't expect anyone would actually replace their phone entirely, but this gave me a lot of insight into what an LTE watch could actually do and when it makes sense to leave your phone at home. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Mike O'Brien, and like I said, I've actually replaced my phone entirely for the past week with this device right here. This is the Apple Watch 6, the cellular version, and I tried to do as much as possible in the past week. A lot of everyday normal stuff like the grocery store, going out to dinner, going for a run, and I really wanted to see what worked and what didn't work. And so in this video, I'm gonna kind of break it down into starting off with what worked well and what I really liked about this, and then I'll get into where this didn't work as well and where it's really nice to have your phone with you. So let's start off with some of the benefits of replacing my phone with a watch. The first one is is that, at least for me, I tend to lose my phone a lot. I leave it in other rooms, and a lot of times I'm using my watch to go and find my phone. But because I didn't need my phone anymore, I found that I wasn't worried about that. Being on my wrist all the time was really convenient. And on top of that, not having a phone in my pocket was also really nice. My pockets were lighter, if you had tighter pants on, you didn't have like your imprint of your phone, and if you had pants that didn't have pockets in them at all, say you are going to play basketball or something like that, then you didn't have to worry about carrying your phone, sending it down, uh, and hoping like nobody takes it, for example. So for all of those reasons, it definitely was convenient to have it just strapped to my wrist. And because this watch has cell service, I didn't have any FOMO. I didn't have any fear of missing out, and I know a lot of people right now might be saying, Mike, why don't you just leave your phone at home don't even worry about the watch. What's wrong with going out totally disconnected? And there's nothing wrong with that. But at least from my experience, what I tend to do if I'm away from my phone for like six hours, eight hours, whatever, I tend to think the whole time like, oh, what if like my close family member died? What if something happened and people are trying to call me? And it's just like scenarios running through my head of situations where somebody might really be trying to contact me. And so having this totally erased that, meant that I could disconnect from my phone and not worry about missing out on important phone calls. On top of that, the inconvenience of a small screen, I found to be kind of beneficial. So I found that I was able to get done whatever I needed to, but it had to be a little bit more deliberate. Whenever I looked at my watch and I wanted to do something, it was really with a purpose. It wasn't really convenient to look on here and like go through like TikTok, Instagram, like the stuff that I normally do on my phone, I didn't do on my watch. So I found that I was more productive, I was more focused, and I had fewer distractions throughout my day. Now, running without a phone is great, and while a lot of watches already allow you to run without your phone and still listen to music and track your GPS and stuff like that, there are situations where you'd really want to have cell service. So, for example, my cousin does a lot of trail running, and so if he's running in the woods, it's an eight mile run, it's not unlikely that you could trip and twist your ankle or break your leg or, or you know, who knows what might happen. And so, having cell service is an important way to get help if you really need it. And then really the last major benefit I found kind of ties in with the previous one, and I'm sure a lot of people already know about this, and that is, I find that when I'm in a social situation, and a lot of people do this as well, it's very easy to use your phone as a crutch. If you're in an elevator, in an Uber ride, any situation when you could talk to a new person, it's just so much easier to look at your phone. It's pretty socially acceptable now, and it's not weird. But when you don't have a phone to look at, I found that I ended up talking to more people. You find some interesting conversations, and although it's kind of uncomfortable sometimes to talk to somebody that you don't know in an Uber ride, ultimately, I thought it was pretty fun. It was something that I, I liked not having that crutch that was tempting to just not talk to the driver. 
Before we get into any limitations and drawbacks I faced, I first want to talk about what worked really well with this, because I know a lot of people have the question of what can you and what can you not do on an LTE watch? So when I was using this watch, I found that first of all, authentication apps work just fine. So like for two factor code, stuff like that, messaging worked just fine, calls worked fine. And all of this, by the way, does work fine if you're on Wi-Fi uh, with a non LTE version, but with the LTE one, of course, you can do that from anywhere, even if you don't have Wi-Fi nearby. But I found that calls were very clear, very easy to use, unless you're in a louder environment. But the benefit is I was connecting my AirPods to these, so phone calls were going through the AirPods and they sounded just normal anyway. Spotify worked, obviously Spotify works offline anyway, but going online with here was also very convenient. So I could listen to podcasts, I could listen to music, and of course there's plenty of other apps where you can listen to audiobooks as well. All three of those I found were very useful when you're going for a run or a bike ride and you don't wanna have to think about downloading the music before you go out and do that exercise. Of course, as always, Apple Pay works very well, which was really nice because not only did I have to not bring my phone with me, but I didn't have to bring my wallet in most situations either because having Apple Pay on the watch made it very convenient. So now I didn't have really anything in my pockets and anywhere I went, I could just tap my watch and pay for things. But of course, you don't have your ID on there. So when I was driving or when I was going to like a bar to buy like literally any situation where there's alcohol, uh, you need to have your ID for that obviously. And so eventually Apple is going to have your ID in Apple, in, in Apple Wallet, if you want it of course. But for now, I ended up bringing my wallet with me in some situations. Navigation also worked reasonably well, although I would not recommend using your watch as your main navigator while you're driving. Uh, it's kind of like a small, it, it, it's definitely not the right situation to do that, but if you're biking, you're running, you're walking, or taking public transit, I mean, it definitely gets the job done. And then the last and honestly most important thing that worked well on this watch was Siri. So when you're out doing whatever, this small screen, like I said, is not the most convenient thing to interact with. So using Siri, I found was a great way to call people and, and really do anything you wanted to, to look up stuff, uh, to set timers, set reminders. Literally most of what I was doing, I was using Siri uh, to set that up. So I thought that that was a really convenient thing. It's something that I hope Apple keeps improving on this watch as well, as there's more and more stuff you can do with Siri, but it's so convenient on here. And that was really one of the things that saved me and made this very practical on a day-to-day -day, or really made, made it very doable on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, of course, not everything went really smoothly. There are plenty of limitations, and as I get into those, I wanna start off with the very first one being the cost. This is obviously more expensive than just having a regular smartwatch. The Apple Watch 6 LTE here, when I got it, it's a 44 millimeter version. It was about $550. So definitely far more expensive than even most phones out there, and it's out of budget for a lot of people. On top of that, after you get the watch, you then have to get a plan. And you can't just get a plan with anybody. You really have to get it with one of the big the big three, basically. In the US, you pretty much have to get it from Verizon, from AT&T, or from T-Mobile. You can't get it from Mint Mobile or Visible or, or any of the more budget-friendly options for your phone. They don't offer an option for an LTE watch. So to get service on my watch, I decided to go with AT&T. I applied for them, and after a couple minutes, I found out that I was rejected, which I then called customer service, and they told me it was because my billing address didn't match my, my delivery address. And so I tried again and again, it failed, it got rejected, and I was getting frustrated. Their customer service was annoying, and I decided to go with T-Mobile. But unfortunately, T-Mobile was really no better. I had about two and a half hours spent on the phone with them until they finally got this set up so that it was finally working. And of course, canceling was another nightmare in itself. But in general, you can expect to pay an, about an extra $10 per month to have your watch on the same plan. And the way it works is it's going to have the same phone number. It's gonna have the same service. Really, everything is going to be the same as your phone. It just works independently. And it's going to be, like I said, an extra $10 per month. So getting into the things that didn't work especially well. One of them was that I didn't initially have apps like WhatsApp on here, which means that I was able to get notifications, but replying was another story. And then if I wanted to get apps on here, because this doesn't have any biometrics, it doesn't have face ID or fingerprints, I ended up having to type in my iCloud password, which I don't know, I have it written down, it's complicated, I change it all the time, so I don't have it memorized. So whenever I wanted to get an app, that was kind of a little bit of a hassle to go through and do that. Next up, I found that it wasn't really that convenient uh, for loud environments. Of course, I had AirPods, like I said, and that helped a lot, but when you're trying to use Siri or you're trying to hear what the Apple Watch is telling you, loud environments are not great. And similarly, quiet environments aren't great either. Using voice commands in a library is kind of a jerk move. So I ended up not doing that either. So in very loud or very quiet environments, 
it's not the best because such a small screen, you're gonna interact with this more with voice than you would something that has a larger screen and is easy to use your thumbs. And of course, a very big and obvious limitation here that you might be thinking about right now actually is that this doesn't have a camera and cameras are really important on phones from capturing memories and taking photos to using Snapchat to even other things that you might not think of right away. So for example, if you go to a restaurant, because of the pandemic last year, a lot of restaurants have no menu there. So they have a little QR code, you scan that, and that's how you get your menu. Now with this, you can't do that. So instead you either have to ask the waiter for a menu or what I did most of the time was I would just look at my friend's phone and that's a, definitely a limitation there and you want to keep that in mind. There are plenty of other situations where you'd wanna have a camera that you will definitely feel limited by not having one when you're using a watch instead of a phone. And then the last limitation, which is another really big one, is actually the battery life. Battery technology has come a really long way, but as you are using a lot of sensors on here, if you have GPS, you've got cellular, Bluetooth, it really starts to drain the battery really quickly. And on average, people use a little bit over three hours of screen time per day. And with a device like this, if you're really pushing all of those sensors all the time, uh, then you're gonna struggle to get through an entire day with this watch. I know that on average, an Apple watch can pretty easily last a day, a day and a half. But like I said, if you're replacing your phone, keep in mind that you're definitely going to be using it a lot more. The cellular service, like I said, the Bluetooth, and of course, just the screen time as well will drain it rather quickly. But of course, if you're just planning to like go out to dinner, or if you're trying to go uh, to the grocery store and you don't wanna bring your phone with you, you probably don't have to worry as much about the battery life and it might actually be a viable solution. Now, technically the lack of social media on here is a limitation, although I imagine uh, there's some amount of people that would really like that and leaving social media at home might be a big benefit. And don't tell anyone, but during this week, I did look at Snapchat once a day on my phone. Another limitation is online banking. I found that sometimes when you're out, it's nice to be able to access your credit card or your bank, whether that's to see how much money you have or really whatever the reason might be. And I mean, I'm sure there's some banks that do work well with an Apple Watch, but there's so many out there. The ones that I use didn't really work that well. And so that was something that I couldn't really do. So can you replace a phone with a smartwatch? That's the question of this video. And I think the answer is only sort of. Sometimes you can do that, but if you're looking to entirely replace your phone with a smartwatch, I think you might have to wait a couple years until we have the technology catching up to where we are today with phones. We don't have any kind of cameras, we don't have good enough batteries, and there's plenty of other limitations with a smartwatch. But with that being said, if you're looking to just replace your phone for maybe a couple hours while you go for a run, go out to dinner, go to a bar, or maybe if you just wanna spend a day doing a social media detox, but you don't wanna have that FOMO of wondering, like me, is somebody trying to contact me? Like I said, you know, sometimes if you're trying to leave your phone at home, you can be worried that somebody's trying to contact you with an emergency and having an LTE watch fixes that. So for those situations, I think you definitely can, but you guys can leave a comment below and let me know what you think about replacing your phone with a smartwatch. Do you think this is something you'll be doing in the future? Do you think it's something that can really be done now very well? And do you have any questions about my experiment? As always, guys, if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. I'm Michael Bryan. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.